perhaps the biggest mistake he made was not about the West. The biggest mistake he made was not about his own military. The biggest mistake he made was this notion that Ukraine was going to welcome him, that the Ukrainians were really Russians in disguise, because, of course, the implication of this war, first and foremost, is that every Ukrainian that you know, imaginable is going to view Russia and Putin as their permanent enemy for generations. And, and how, how can you possibly think that that's something that you can suddenly win? It's gotten so much worse for him as a consequence of the invasion. Totally, and I do believe here he's at his worst because strangely enough, what is at the heart of his mistake was the experience of Crimea. Uh, during the annexation of Crimea, which was mostly ethnic Russians, by the way, it was an ethnic Russians. But don't forget something critically important: there was a twenty thousand Ukrainian soldiers, and they didn't fight back. And this idea that Ukrainian people, deeply in their hearts, are loyal to Russia, but you have this corrupt pro-Western colonizing elite, which is working for the West. This was how he was perceiving Ukraine as the Western protectorate and people waiting basically for him to come and to liberate them. And then this totally backfired. There is a story that for me is very powerful to understand also how much Ukraine has changed for the last seven or eight years. Because don't forget 10, 11 years ago, Ukraine was the most Russia friendly country in the world. You go on the opinion polls, they like Putin, they like Russia. This similarity of language, similarity of culture was there. So Ukraine was not Russian. And before every, the 2014 before invasion. Before 2014. Yes. And then came 2014, and uh, President Putin always positioned himself as an expert on humiliation. He can talk for hours how humiliated Russia is, but he does not have a sensitivity for humiliating somebody else. And what the Ukrainians experienced in Crimea was not simply the Russia's betrayal, but they were humiliated. There was the story that stayed with me for all these years. Uh, out of all Ukrainian ships that had been basically encircled in Sevastopol, there was only one whose captain said, we are not going to surrender. And when the Russian ships went around him and said, but surrender, you don't have a chance. His answer was, we Russians do never surrender. It was back in 2014. And then you have 2022, and you have a famous story with the Snake Island, where yeah. you have this group Russian of warship, Ukrainians, go and after this yourself. time it was yeah. Russian ship, go to hell. And I do believe for these seven years, a new Ukrainian nation that had been built, strongly anti-Russian, strongly anti-Putin, and very much kind of a proud with its determination to resist. And he missed the birth of this nation. And this is very funny because he's the father of this nation. This anti kind of a Russia, Ukraine was very much the result of his actions, but he missed to see it. He was still seeing something that existed before. He missed it even as there was ongoing fighting with thousands of deaths every day, every week over the Donbass, over the occupied territories and the little green men. I mean, the Ukrainians were resisting. He missed all of that. He missed all of this because, uh, because it didn't fit to his deep conviction that uh, the Russian world is a special civilizational space that all these uh, Russian speaking people are Russians. Uh, he also had incredible dismissal about the Ukrainian state, that, that this is not a state, that they do not exist, that they cannot perform, that this is very dysfunctional. Uh, and part of it is also very much rooted in a very different way the Russians and uh, the Ukrainians experience their states. Russians, even anti-Russian, uh, anti-Putin Russians, he has a respect for the vertical of the state. The state should be strong. And the strong state means strong leader. And you basically can disagree who is the good leader, but this is there. And the Ukrainians, it's not by accident that some of the strongest anarchist movements in Europe were very much based in Ukraine. Machno was in Ukraine. So the idea of state is totally different. Society is stronger than the state. They basically prefer kind of a state which is not trying uh, uh, to oppress. Uh, you have this idea of a freedom which is very much against your own state. 
From this point of view, I have the feeling that Russians, not only Putin, have been historically misreading Ukraine because they're always expecting the Ukraine to view the strengths of the state in the way the Russians do it. This is the most difficult to understand your neighbors. It's more difficult to understand your relatives because you're so sure that they're like you. And then suddenly they realize it's not the case.